because I just, I'm kind of a shy person, believe it or not. <laughs> I used to be shy. Okay, so what I do is I um, empty all of my paints into the watercolor um, uh, palette, and I let them dry for two days, you know, so that I like working with dry paints. Now, how many of you work with wet paints? <laughs> you, you mean it's a flash. Flash. Okay, keep an open mind. <laughs> so anyway, so what I do is I activate them. And the reason that I like the dry paints is because I like to double load and triple load. And that means that I can go from color to color. And I know that the only layer that is contaminated is the top layer. So anyway. So we'll wet. Um, and another thing I do different than a lot of instructors um, is I tape my paper down instead of using the clips and, you know, whatever. Um, I, I think the clips get in the way, so I like it this way. And it doesn't, every says, does it warp too much, but it really doesn't. It, it holds it down, so anyway. So I'm going to wet the paper, and it sounds like I'm really scrubbing this hard, but I'm not. You don't want to scrub it. You want to just barely go along and just wet all of the surface and check it. You see all these lights, how fast this dries. Um, what I do first is I want to have a white pathway through my painting for you to follow. So what I do is kind of a cruciform design. And so I like to have the areas of white go away from not straight across, not like a, a cross. But I want, I want to be able to indicate to myself, OK, that's where I'm going to have the white pathway. And to start with, I use pretty much red, yellow, and blue. And not that blue. Okay. And this is cobalt blue. I know I'm going to get color questions. Cobalt blue. <laughs> Those who teach, right, Frank? This right. is the number one question. What color is that, right? So watch what happens when I triple load. Isn't that fun? Can you see that in the back or not? That's just going from color to color. Now, you can't do this unless the paints are dried for two days. Otherwise, you're going to contaminate those. Now, another rule that I like to do is I like to have every corner different. And this first layer is going to be pretty much um, a light Light. I'm doing it a little darker so you can see it, but it should be pretty light. And I'm just reaching for all four sides of the paper, going across that middle area, breaking into that. And one way that I keep my colors pure, like right here, this purple up next to this green, I love to put a blue in between that, and that way, those two colors don't like each other. I mean, they're really pretty when they're next to each other, but they, when you mix them, they're a really ugly gray. So um, what I do, I'm going to give you a color wheel lesson here in just a second, um, is I think about what's next to each color on the color wheel, and I try to go from green to blue, and then what's next to blue is either a pink or a purple. If it's a pink, then it'll turn into a purple and then mixed. Okay. I want a lot of, I like a lot of color in this first layer. Right? <laughs> <coughs> a wonderful world of color. Okay, I've already, my pathway is over here instead of down here, so. Okay. Then I tip it a little bit and let these colors blend a little bit. And at home when you're doing this, you won't have to do the squirt. This is just drying because of the lambs. I love watching watercolor work. 
So when it gets that juicy color or juicy texture like that, then I like to add salt. And when I work with florals, this is exactly the same process that I do when I'm doing a floral. Um, I kind of mark with circles where I want my where I want my flowers. And then I try to avoid that area, but yet I love it when the background color comes into those flowers. So it's not ending up being a cutout flower that you just pasted on. So, um, so you do this first coat, and then I add a little salt um, for this particular painting. And I love to, when I do the salt, I take a pinch out of this margarita salt, and I go like that with a twist. And what that does is that makes it explode more. Is that, you didn't know that. Didn't is, is, is margarita salt different than? Margarita salt is the best. <laughs> <laughs> margarita salt, I always say, if it, my painting doesn't turn out, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> So where you have salt, you don't want that just in one area, but you don't want it all over the whole paper either. You just want, you know, just <coughs> less is better. So I'm going to put it in like three or four areas here. And like I said, if you do a little twist with your finger, a little snap, it will make a really nice explosion. And you can, te you can test this later on and see what you think. Where do you buy that uh, margarita salt? You know what? Store. You can get this at the grocery store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it finer? Is it or what? It's no, coarser. it's coarser than regular salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's coarser. Is it not as coarse as sea salt? Right. Yeah. Sea salt it was a big thing. Yeah. 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 Rock salt. You know, rock salt. Big thing. I don't use that yet, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work here and it doesn't dissolve, I've tried it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wipe off, I babysit my tape, being I'm a, I'm a taper. And um, did you guys know there's a difference in tapes? This is probably wrote by some of you don't use tape. Um, Manco tape, M-A-N-C-O, is the best. And I've got two of these, so I'm going to send it around so you guys can see. It looks like easy. Hard to get it? Uh, I, it is getting harder to get a hold of, but Menards has it. And um, Rainbow Foods used to have it, but they don't anymore. So, okay, so now I let this work. You see how I've got, I'm reaching with the white for all. I've got a white pathway going through, and I've got a lot of colors, so I'm open to be able to do different colors later. Um, I like to kind of keep um, in this first layer pretty much to the primary colors. Because if it's a blue, I can change that to everything except orange. You know, anything on the color wheel. And if it's, if it's a um, yellow, I can change that to everything except purple. So it's, it, it gives you a lot more leeway when you kind of stay with the primary colors. I do like to have a few of the other colors in just because grays don't hurt when you're on, so. See the salt starting to work already? The front row can probably see this. <laughs> okay, put this aside. And I think I have to take the next one down, so I'll just put this one on. You in this, Frank? Mark? It's <laughs> <laughs> <And so> fast. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> and on that note about how fast, well, I know when beginners do salt, they usually think it's not working, it's not working, I'll add more, or I'll fuss into it, or whatever. Um, you know, you just have to put it on and let it go. And the less brush strokes you do, the better that salt will work. If you remember when you paint skies, how you only do a few strokes and you let it kind of bleed, um, that is what you want to do as far as salt. You know, less brush strokes you have, the better off. So, okay, now I've got my indicators of my pathway again. We'll see if I'll listen to it this time. Um, now, when I get this background on, I let it dry completely. It has to be dried for this next step. And um, tonight's 
demo is um, going to be the seagull illusion. And I hope there are no wildlife haters in this group. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet if you are. <laughs> anyway, um, that's why I like abstracts. You can't go wrong. You say, oh, I didn't do that. It's supposed to look like that. That wig is broken off. So I'm going to do, I love to draw my, draw whatever I'm going to use, and then turn them to the other I always like to turn them every which way and see where I want to put. Okay, I'll put my center of interest over here in this one. And I want to have the center of interest flying into the painting. And when I put this on here, I want, I don't want to put it totally in the white. That's what most people want to do. You want to have it where part of it is into the other color. And that's where these work out so nice and why, I, you know, masking doesn't work for this. So I put the bird <coughs> where I want it. And right now, I'm sure you can't see through, through this in the mirror, but the wing is up in the blue, and part of his body is in the blue, and part of this wing is in the salty area. What I love about this salt is it kind of appears like waves or something, you know? So, um, Now there's two ways that you can transfer the seagull to the, to the paper. And one way is to use transfer paper. And the best transfer paper is ones that you make your own. But I don't know how to make it. Does anybody know how? I mean, it's something with rubbing graphite. For, Jan, do you know? Yeah, and You're, then you, and you, you rub the graphite on, and then you uh, pour alcohol on it, I think. And then you rub it around, right? Yeah. Okay, so it takes a long time to get that graphite on there, right? Does it look real scribbly when you're... No, it's pretty... Well, I, I don't Pretty know. solid? Yeah, it's pretty solid, although I use that. <laughs> I use that drafting paper that you've got. Except, is, this, is that what this is? This, drafting, was, drafting <laughs> this was given to me by a student. When you're a teacher, you are the luckiest person in the world. <laughs> I, have, I have more gifts from my students. I just don't know who gave it to me, too. So um, I love getting gifts, but the problem is I don't know what I'm using. I just know I like it. <laughs> and I went and I bought some, and I brought it on, on purpose to show you what not to buy. Because the kind that you buy doesn't erase. At least mm -hmm. this one that I bought does not erase. And I got it from Dick Lick, and it's called graphite transfer paper. Yeah. That is the okay. page. Do not use this. Okay. <laughs> you will not be able to erase your, erase your lines. My favorite way to do this, I'll show you how I do this first, but my favorite way to do it, now I just trace this. I've got the carbon side down. And um, my favorite thing to do is to hold this up to a glass door, sliding glass door or window, and have it on one side and then trace it through to the other side. 